Would you join with me in a moment of prayer this morning? All knowing and all loving God, we thank you from the very bottom of our hearts for your presence in our lives. We thank you that you continue to manifest yourself not only in this place as we worship this morning, but in our lives as we go about our daily business. We thank you, God, for the ongoing revelation of who you are and that ongoing development of the relationship that you call us and invite us to have with you. And so this morning as we come to respond to your word, as we sing and as we pray, as we find that anointing within ourselves, we ask now that you would still our hearts and open our minds so that we may be channels of that grace and channels of that truth. Speak to us, God, so that we may speak you into this world, breathe you into our lives. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, that you would mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be acceptable to you in the name of Jesus the Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. This week we continue our series of sermons on In the Midst of Darkness There is Light. And last week we talked about how in the midst of darkness there is light in the word of hope. And Reverend Tim Hamilton shared with us at the nine o'clock service last week about that light of hope that continues to generate itself um, in the world. He talked about his own job. He's the chaplain, one of the chaplains down at Kaiser Permanente, uh, just down on Sunset Boulevard. And he talked about how in his own life and in his own work, he is called to be a sense of hope for many people who are facing um, not only life-threatening illnesses, but are threatening, uh, facing some of the, the darkest moments in their own lives. Anyone who's been into hospital knows that they're not always the nicest of places to be. Uh, and so a chaplain is someone who comes alongside and works with the families and works with individuals to, to help them to see the hope and to keep that hope alive. He talked about how sometimes keeping that hope alive and him being that light of hope is, is a, an incredibly difficult job, especially when he knows and the family knows that, that life-threatening illnesses and that perhaps some of the folks that he has to work with and minister to are not going to survive their stay in hospital. And he talked about how him as a chaplain is called to be that light of hope, to work with the families and to work with those who are, are dying, to face that reality, but to know that there is a hope a hope of an eternal life, a hope of a light that continues to burn even though their life might be extinguished. He also shared with us about the movie Milk, and some of us have seen that movie, and some of us will continue to see that movie. I've seen it twice now, so um, I feel like I've really contributed to it. Um, but uh, he talked about how in the movie Milk, he was, uh, the milk, Harvey Milk, was able to continue to offer hope even in the midst of his own darkness when he didn't win the elections three times in a row, and yet still he called out hope in the midst of darkness to our community just 20 or 30 years ago. Today we, we talk about how the, in the midst of our darkness, there is still the light of peace. And I have to say to you, when I first looked at this sermon series and thought about how on earth are we going to um, incorporate these four themes of the, se of the season of Advent, how can we incorporate those within our church? When I talked about peace, I couldn't help but think about the chaos of war that is happening in our world right at this very moment, even as we speak the words of peace. That we certainly don't live in a peaceful world that we certainly live in a world that has its priorities upside down and we continue to live in a world where even though we try to breathe peace, it seems that the powers of be don't want peace in our world. That somehow it seems that there is an economy of war and that, that, that there seems to be a need to be at war with one another. I thought about how we can talk about peace. I thought about how Jesus was thinking about peace even in his own nation when he walked the earth 2,000 years ago. He didn't come to a world that was in harmony with one another. He, he came to a world that was disconnected. He, he came to a world that, that even though they wanted peace ultimately in their own lives, that there certainly wasn't peace amongst the nations. The Jewish folks were at odds with the Romans. 
And there was a, an ultimate, a, a political and an eternal battle going on between who was going to get the, the rights to the Roman land, who was going to be able to have the right to rule in the city and in the people's lives of Jerusalem. He didn't, uh, however, talk about so much the, the need for a political peace, but he talked about the need for an internal peace. A peace that passes all understanding. And Jesus taught us and I think tells us today to look at the things rather differently. Perhaps to turn things upside down ourselves. And even though we must focus on peace within the world, I think that that is the ultimate journey for us. The ultimate commission for us is to live in harmony, one with each other. But that we should also look at our own eternal pieces. That it's so easy to focus just on the outside without really focusing on what's going on on the insides of our own lives. In the midst of darkness, there is the light of peace. And I think what we are called to as we light our second candle today in this season of Advent is that we need to illuminate within our own lives as well as in our own church and in our own community. We need to illuminate within our own hearts and minds those places of disunity, those places of disconnect, those places that we need to allow that light to illuminate within our lives so that we can find an internal peace. For if we can truly work on our internal peace, then we can begin to work on the external peace that we need to find in this world. So many of us are called to reconcile with ourselves. I think that's why therapists make so much money in the United States. Is that, uh, and I need to be careful because there are some therapists in the congregation this morning, so I, I don't want to tread too, too much on them. Uh, but the reality is, is that we, uh, we, we spend a lot of time about thinking about our internal peace. Uh, I need to say just to those therapists, I've been in therapy for a long time in my life. Uh, when you go to seminary, they encourage you to get into a spiritual program um, that helps you to deal with some of the issues that are going on in our own lives because the reality is that we're all messed up. Things have happened to us throughout our journey of life. And, and as a minister and as a pastor, we're called to dabble in the affairs of other people's lives. And so it's really important that if you're dabbling in the affairs of other people's lives, that you're also dabbling in the affairs of your own life. And, and working out some of the childhood issues and some of the, you know what I'm talking about. All right. That we're called to, to be in a state of reconciling ourselves. To, to think about some of the things that disconnect us with the world. To think about the ways in which we have been damaged in our own lives. And that those damages cause us to be disconnected with the world that we live in right now. It, it's so easy to bury our heads in the sand. And it's even more easy to point the finger at somebody else and the disconnect that they might have in their life than it is to point the finger at our own. <laughs> And to allow the light of Christ to illuminate those places in our own hearts and minds that really draw our attention back to what it is that we need to reconnect, to be at peace, to develop that relationship with Christ and to allow the peace. Jesus says that the peace that he offers is a peace that passes all understanding. It's not necessarily a, a peace that the world will give. 